In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a popular post widget to your site, which is going to show a list of all the popular posts on your website. It looks like this. You can add it to your sidebar. You can add it inside of posts or inside of pages. Each place you add it will have its own settings. I'm going to show you how all that works in this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. We help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss future videos. Now let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is install a plugin. So let's go to plugins and then add new and look up WordPress popular posts plugin. The one we want is this one right here by Hector. It has a lot of good reviews, a lot of installs, updated within the last week, compatible with the current version of WordPress, all the things you want to see for a plugin. But before we install it, let me say if you're installing this on a live site, you want to back up your site first. Just in case something goes wrong, it's pretty rare that something does, but if something does go wrong, you can restore it to your backup and everything's fine. If you're doing this on a test site like I am, backing up is not as important, although having a backup still makes life easier if something goes wrong. And if you need help backing up your site, there's a link in the description down below. That'll take you to a tutorial where I show you how to back up your site and restore it if need be. Click on install now when you're ready and then activate. And the settings for this plugin are pretty basic. You can find them under settings and then WordPress popular posts and then go to tools. We can set a default thumbnail. If a popular post that's being shown with the plugin doesn't have a featured image, it'll use this default. If it does have a featured image, it will pull it in. You can also choose to have the first image in the post, first attachment on the post, or a custom field be the image that's pulled in. I like to keep lazy load on. It's the only thing I usually change in this top area is adding an image right here for the thumbnail. And under data, for log views from, you can choose to have everyone, logged in users only, or visitors only. If you choose everyone, it includes logged in users, which includes you. So you are influencing how popular a post is if you're visiting your post a lot or if your writers are visiting a post a lot while they're creating it. So if you want to have that influence the results, keep it on everyone, choose which one you want there. And the log limit allows you to specify how much data you want to keep in your site. If log limit is disabled, that means the maximum. It'll keep collecting data forever. And it all goes in your database, by the way. So you don't want to do that. I usually set it to keep data for 180 days or 90 days or even 30 days. If, you've, if your website is really, really busy, then it can bloat your database pretty quickly, adding all this data in there. And so you want to try to keep this as low as possible if your website's really busy. And down here, we see data sampling. If you do have a busy website, this explains what data sampling is. Instead of recording every single visit, it records the trend of the visits, if that makes sense. So if data sampling is disabled, it records every single one. And if it's enabled, it just takes a sample of the traffic, not all the traffic for your log, which prevents your database from being too bloated. And it also prevents the plugin writing to your database very, very frequently because every time a visit is made to your site, there is an entry put in your database. And if there's thousands of those every minute, that can slow down your database's response time, which is not what you want. So once you choose all the settings you want here, click on apply. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. And then, and then to add the popular post widget, go to appearance and then widgets. And if you have the latest version of WordPress, this is how your widget area looks. If you still have an older version of WordPress, you'll see the older version of widgets, but they work very differently. Actually, I was going to say about the same, but it's actually very different. If you have the older version of WordPress, there'll be a list of widgets on the left-hand side, including one called WordPress Popular Posts. So you'll see this on the side. You can drag and drop it into your widget area on the right. In this case, we search for it as a block and we can drag and drop it to the widget area on the right. So the dragging and dropping functions the same way, but the, the way this widget area looks is quite different from the old version of WordPress compared to this new one. And these are the settings right here for the popular posts blog. There are quite a number of settings. We're going to go through them right now. So first we're going to add a title and it's going to be most popular posts. I'm going to limit the number of posts to five. The higher the number, the more sidebar real estate this will take up. And it can take up quite a bit, depending on what settings you choose down below here. We're going to sort the posts by total views. You can also choose comments as the most popular metric. And the time range allows us to choose the time range that the plugin is going to use to calculate post popularity. And the popularity being just the number of views. What to consider when you choose the time frame is your older posts will likely have more views all the time 
because they're just older. They're more likely to be ranking in a search engine, more likely to get search engine traffic, more likely to have a lot more views because they've been around longer. So if you choose all time, the popular posts widget might not change a lot because if you have a website that's already existing and already has a bunch of traffic, your biggest posts will likely remain your biggest posts for a long time. If you choose 24 hours or seven days, it will only choose the last seven days of data. And so the really old posts that have been there for years, they might only be getting 20 views a day, but because they've had 20 views a day for years, they have a huge number of views. But if you choose just the last seven days for the time range, you'd only have 20 views times seven, 140 views being the metric for those older posts, which means that newer posts have a chance to break into the popular posts area. And you could also choose to display only posts published within the selected time range. So if you choose last seven days and you check this, it will only show popular posts that are published within that time range, which further allows you to freshen up the popular posts on a regular basis. And if you have a lot of repeat visitors, it's important to have something like this updated constantly because they want to see the newest stuff. They don't want to see the same old post for years in your popular post widget. So I'm going to choose 30 days and I'm going to keep this checked. And for the filters, I'm going to choose posts, but you can also have pages in here if you want. You can have custom post types if you know what their name is. I'm just going to keep it as posts. You can choose posts to exclude based on the ID. You can choose authors to include. So only authors that you select with the ID here are going to be the ones whose posts are showed. And to find the IDs, all these fields here rely on an ID, and you find them all the same way. So I'm going to use authors as an example. We're going to go down to users and open our users page and then pick any one of these guys, go to edit and up in the top, we see a user ID equals six. So to show posts from FIFA Air and nobody else, we would enter the user ID of six right there. Then you can add a comma and add other ones if you want as well. If you leave this blank, it'll show posts from all authors. And so your post ID or the ID that that plugin is looking for is always going to be up here in the URL with something something ID equals every time. If you go to posts, so as another example, just to reiterate, go to quick or go to, sorry, go to edit. We see post equals, so it doesn't have ID this time, but post equals 1704. So to show just this post or to exclude that post, let's say, put that in there and then that post will not be displayed as a popular post. So that's where you find the IDs, always up in the URL and they're always the number. And they're required for each of these fields that you see here. So set those as you see fit. You can also do a little trial and error to see what changes when you enter IDs in here or not. The post settings allow you to shorten the title, which is usually a good idea if you have long titles. You can display the post excerpt, which is usually a bad idea if you have long post excerpts and a narrow sidebar. They can take up too much real estate. And I would always display the post thumbnail. I'm just going to keep this as set size manually to 75 by 75. Shorten title, keep that at 25. You can change it to characters or words and change the length as well. So you can play around with what works best for your sidebar real estate. And you can also add this widget into posts. So it's not just a sidebar. I'll show you how to do that after I show you how to get it in the sidebar. We can display the comment count, the views, the author, the date, the taxonomy. You can also use HTML markup if you want. And I don't want to. I'm going to click on update. We're going to see how this looks on our front end. Let's go to visit site and then go to the blog. And we see our most popular posts here and it says, sorry, no data so far. Why does it say that? That's because it doesn't pull its data out of a hat. The popular post plugin was just installed. This is a demo site with almost no traffic. And so there's nobody coming to view these posts. And so there's no data for the plugin to pull from. So now if we visit some posts, if I go to this post, it now logged a visit for this post. Let's go to another one. That's a nice one. Let's go to another one. And let's come back out here and refresh. We can see some results coming in here. Right now, just this one post is showing up. The others will show up that we visited in a little while. And this one has no thumbnail. And this is because there's no featured image associated with this. And you could fix that by adding a featured image to this post or having a default image that's different than the no thumbnail one, which we can set in the settings right here. And now you might be wondering, why aren't these all updating? Why aren't those all showing? If we scroll down, 
we see we have a refresh cache every option every one minute. So every minute the cache is refreshed and then we'll see a different set of posts possibly when that refresh happens. You can choose to go minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, or years. And we know that the other posts have been visited by going to the stats. On the stats page, we can see stats about our site visits. We have a bunch of different time frames. Let's go to the seven day one here. We see it's all zero, 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 zero until today. And we have 14 visits already, which is pretty awesome. And it's all me just clicking around. We did the 360 image first. So it's got three views, which we see right here reflected with three views. And then we see we visited these ones as well. So these ones have been visited and they'll show up should be fairly shortly here in this list. And sometimes the view count is not that impressive. So if this was a live website, I might not want to have my popular posts showing three views. And you can remove the view count in the settings that we set a few moments ago. We're going to set them again right now, but this time we're going to add the widget to a post. So instead of being in the sidebar, it's going to be in the post content somewhere. So let's find a post. Let's just use this one right here and then go to edit post. You can also get here through your dashboard by going to posts, all posts, and then click on edit on whichever one you want to add the widget to. And then once you're in the post editor, which looks just like this, we can find our little plus and add the WordPress popular post widget. This is going to spin for a second or a few seconds and we'll see all the settings. Here they are. Let's call this most popular posts again. Let's change this to five. And all the settings are the same as what we saw a few moments ago when we set up the widget for the sidebar. The one thing I want to point out is down here, this checkbox that says display views, uncheck that and it won't display views anymore. And these settings are specific to this specific widget on this post. So you could have in your sidebar, have a display views and in the, uh, the post have it not display views, or we could have it in the post display the excerpt because there's more space inside of the post than there is on the sidebar, which means that every instance of this widget that you add to your site, you can have it display different things if you want it to. Let's click on update to add this to the page and then click on view post to see how it looks and scroll down and we see our popular posts here and we see additional ones such as a 360 image because the cache refreshed. If you recall, cache refreshing by default is set to one minute. So every one minute it's going to refresh and we're going to see new posts. I want to add some styling in here. Maybe have a separate on the top and the bottom. Uh, maybe not have the excerpt looks a little silly. You can't even read the whole thing. Just have the title and the image. Maybe have two columns of posts. So you could have the popular posts be a title widget inside Gutenberg and then have the popular posts in two columns, have two columns of each one displaying different things. Maybe one will be popular posts by views, other one will be popular posts by comments. So you have two different columns for that if you wanted to. Next up, check out this playlist right here where I show you how to speed up your WordPress site beyond what you might think is possible. If you want to speed up your site, check out these videos. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass in WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.